Even the best security programs have gaps. If you had any cybersecurity expert tell you otherwise, they're just simply not an expert. You see, it's critical to respond when security breaches occur, and developing an incident response capability can reduce the impact of an incident. It can also help you document evidence and meet legal requirements. The U.S. Code of Federal Regulations contains many references to incident management capabilities. Several of them mandate non-federal organizations to document and report incidents. The Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA, the Department of Defense, DOD, and the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC, all have requirements related to incident response. To make matters worse, the authoritative sources that exist to help with educating organizations on incident response provide massive documents filled with jargon and acronyms within them. I mean, NIST Special Publication, or SP 800-61 Revision 2, is 79 pages long alone. So what are the essential elements of an incident response plan and how do you turn those elements into a template that's readily available for your organization to implement? Hi everyone, I'm Matt from eTactics and today I'm going to explain 15 essential elements of an incident response plan template. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that button below. And while you're down there, hit that alert bell icon next to it as well so when we post new helpful content, you get notified. <laughs> In the blog post provided within the description of this video, we took a deep dive into the authoritative sources guides for incident response, found patterns, and distilled the main components of an incident response policy so that you can easily create an incident response template. Incident response policies often establish a set of objectives for the organization. The plan details how the organization implements their policy. Both NIST Special Publication 861 Rev 2 and Special Publication 800 53 Rev 5 contain guidance for drafting an incident response policy. The other publications are helpful for documenting these components. The policy elements cited in NIST SP 861 Rev 2 go well beyond the requirements listed in NIST SP 853 Rev 5, but there is also a solid amount of crossover as well. Even after knowing these elements though, it's important that you tailor your organization's own elements into your policy. The 15 essential elements to keep in mind for your incident response plan template are compliance, scope, roles and responsibilities, management commitment, coordination among entities, purpose, objectives, levels of authority, prioritization of incidents, organizational structure, reporting and contact forms, handoff and escalation points, performance measures, reporting requirements, and definitions. Now let's talk about each of these elements in greater detail. First, management commitment. Management should understand and approve all policies. By signing a policy, Management commits to the content contained within the policy. Second, purpose. The purpose section of a policy should describe what the policy sets out to do. If you're struggling to write the purpose section, start with the objectives section. Once you've written out the objectives, look to summarize them as the purpose of the policy. Third, objectives. When writing objectives, you want traceability to the incident response plan. Take your main workflows, stem the mission statements from them, and combine each into a single statement you can use as your first goal. Fourth, scope of applicability. Scope refers to the parts of your organization that this policy applies to. Scope can include organizations, individuals, technology assets, or facilities. Fifth, definitions. A policy is a great place to define terms. You want to make sure you have definitions associated with different aspects of an incident to ensure that everyone is on the same page. Sixth, Roles and Responsibilities The Good Practice Guide for Incident Management details mandatory and optional roles. These roles serve to group together tasks performed within the incident management function. For larger organizations, many individuals or teams may fill a role. For smaller organizations, a single individual may fill many roles. Seventh, Classification The Form of Incident Response and Security Teams, or FIRST, manages a list of categories. There are a couple of reasons organizations should classify incidents. First, certain categories may warrant higher sensitivities and more restricted communication. Second, having discrete categories allows for more detailed analysis of performance. Now, eighth, sensitivity levels. The first incident categories relate to a sensitivity classification table where sensitivity is measured in three different levels, not sensitive, sensitive, and extremely sensitive. Ninth, coordination among entities. Your policy should document approved contacts at outside organizations. Tenth, prioritization. NIST SP 861 discusses three factors relevant to prioritizing incidents. 
These factors include the functional and information impacts and the recoverability effort. Eleventh, levels of authority. Your policy should give authority to confiscate equipment and to track activities. Having only procedures that list these specific functions is insufficient. Twelfth, compliance. There are two common compliance requirements for reporting incidents. Which set of breach notification requirements you have to adhere to depend on the HIPAA breach notification rule and or DOD cyber incident reporting requirement. Thirteenth, performance measures. Incident data has the potential to provide several measures of success. The last two essential elements of an incident response plan template are handoff and escalation points and organizational structure. Handoff and escalation can be covered throughout sections like roles and responsibilities and classifications. Meanwhile, I'm not going to cover organizational structure because that's specific to your organization. Now we covered a lot in this video, but we simply had no choice. Creating an incident response plan template for your organization might be one of the most important documents that exists within it. Now that's not an over-exaggeration either. As the world continues to move to and acclimate itself with cloud-based systems and data-driven techniques, the operating risks continue to grow for you. Thus, you need to make sure you have everything in place to react accordingly if an incident ever occurs at your organization. If you'd like to learn more about incident response plan, if you'd like to learn more about incident response plan templates, reach out to eTactics. And you already made it this far into the video, so you might as well like it, share it, and comment below.